Hello, this is Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer. Welcome home. Soar into tower. We are ready for takeoff. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas. Hey, it's Amy from DVC Clubhouse. Hey, Clubbers, it's Scott from DVC Clubhouse. Hey, it's Kathleen from DVC Clubhouse. Welcome aboard, it's Phil from DVC Clubhouse. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Debrief Podcast brought to you by DVC Clubhouse. This is Amy, and I am joined, as always, by Phil, Kathleen, and Scott. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome aboard, guys. How's everyone doing on this lovely day today? Fantastic. Phenomenal. It's school vacation. Somebody please come up here and save me. What are you complaining about? You're getting to play with your 3D printer and make all of these cool things. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Today was kind of cool. We 3D printed cool stuff for our podcast and video cast. And Luke and I put together an A10 Warthog 172 scale model. It was kind of like the ultimate day. It could be worse. What are you laughing at? I think I'm just laughing at the ultimate day. Well, it was kind of cool. What about you guys? You guys had to work today. We had the ultimate work day. Yeah. Yeah. Boo. <laughs> Yeah, well, sadly, we can't always be in Disney World. The real life has to sometimes take a uh, center stage. But that's why we do this, so that we can kind of escape once in a while to uh, to Disney World through our conversations. And hopefully our listeners feel the same way. Well, yeah, our podcast conversations that happen once a week and our nonstop 27-hour-a-day group text message that just goes back and forth <laughs> nonstop. Correct. I'm okay with it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, <laughs> good. I thought I thought you were complaining about it. <laughs> Phil has left the chat. <laughs> I was just uh, I was I was on a Zoom call earlier when you guys were having your your text texting back and forth of what to talk about, like options and stuff. And I'm just looking at it. And I'm like, <laughs> just some things I can't answer sometimes because of work. But well. To that point, what we settled on today, because we had a couple of things that are kind of in the hopper of things that we can or or want to discuss, but what we settled on today, especially because it's been kind of relevant, a, a topic that has been popping up in the news and social media about Disney World is expansion and the talk that they could potentially add a fifth gate. And so we wanted to have a conversation about what we would like to see. I think all of us are kind of on team expand what they have versus team add a fifth gate, but we can get into that. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we'd like to see happen. And then if they do decide, if they do announce that they're going to add a fifth gate, what we would like to see them add some ideas for something that would be exciting to us. I'm going to abstain from that part of the conversation because I don't want to give them any encouragement whatsoever to add a fifth gate. Well, I know that they listen to us and take all of our advice from our podcast, so, you know. All 21 episodes as of today. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Phil, I know that you have some, some strong feelings, so why don't we start with you today? All right, so I'll I'll start the conversation rather than go through everything I've got in my mind. Let's start it, I guess, a little easier. We don't need a fifth gate. Scott said it himself, and I'll let him chime in on, and I agree with him, by the way, why we don't need a fifth gate. There's a lot of reasons. But as I've stated in previous episodes, take care of the house you have, upgrade the house you have before you go throwing on unneeded additions. How many times have we said that Animal Kingdom is a half-day park? And I know people are going to jump up and down and yell and scream that there's trails and there's animals and they can spend all day there. Hey, I'm happy for you. But as of lunchtime, I'm out. I've seen what I need to see. I've done what I need to do. The same thing goes for Hollywood Studios. 
it's a half day park, especially if you're not into Star Wars, aside from maybe the four hour wait for Slinky Dog and two hour for Midway Mania. There's a lot more they can do before they add a fifth gate. So I would say, for me, look at it this way. What can we add to those two parks? And then what about all the space that's being unused that we can fill up in the other two parks? Yeah, I'm on board with that. I'm totally against a fifth gate. And like Phil said, if they could just expand or just improve, I guess, what they already have. I think there's a lot of different areas, especially in those two parks that you just talked about, where they could just make a lot of improvements, where they could just kind of expand a little bit. I know Animal Kingdom, my first thought, did they confirm that they're going to they're gonna redo Dinoland and it's going to be, um, is it Zootopia? So no, they have talked about retiring Dinoland and the ideas in play right now are Equatorial Americas, I believe, which uh, the concept art and some of the commentary was perhaps turning Dinosaur into another Indiana Jones ride and bringing in Encanto. Okay. So that was my first place that I went to. And then Hollywood Studios, of course, where you have the Galactic Star Cruiser. That was a failed experiment. It seems like there's a lot that they could do if they just expanded Hollywood Studios. Magic Kingdom help me out because it's been years since I've been on it. Stitch over in Tomorrowland. Stitch is great escape. Oh, I'm going to get to that when we get to Magic Kingdom. Trust me. You want to talk about one of the biggest pieces of wasted real estate in Magic Kingdom. That is the top of the list. I'm just thinking out loud with different areas, but I, I thought about that. Maybe I'll get crucified for it, but I just don't really care about Tom Sawyer's Island. And oh boy. And the Swiss family Robinson tree. Like, I, I just don't care about that. I feel like those are places where they could probably put something a little more interesting or just improve what they have there. But I feel like those are just wasted areas that people will occasionally go to. Maybe they'll visit once in a blue moon, but it's not like a high traffic must do area, especially in magic kingdom where there's so much to do. People really you know, they don't give much thought to those areas. But yeah, Stitch, how long has that been closed? That's been out for a while now. Well, I mean, I think that the, you know, the reality is when we're thinking about Disney remaining competitive in the, you know, Central Florida theme park market and Universal opening Epic Universe imminently, you know, Disney is going to have to do something relatively big to get people excited. And while, yes, I, I don't think that adding a fifth gate is the route that I want them to go, I do think that they need to do something exciting enough in one, you know, one or two of the parks to generate some buzz the way that, you know, Galaxy's Edge did when that opened. I mean, everyone was really excited about that. That was something that was highly anticipated. People were lining up at all hours of the morning to be able to experience that. So I think Disney really needs to do something that is going to move the needle in terms of getting people excited about Disney again, because currently people are just feeling like we're kind of stagnant. It's been a little like the experience has become a little stale at this point because we're seeing crazy crowds. You know, we had our conversation I think it was during the maybe the wish list conversation about Genie Plus about how that has almost ruined like the queue experience and made it longer. So people are just feeling kind of meh about Disney right now. And they're gonna need to do something big. So I mean, I feel like we the real opportunities to do something significant that would make people excited, I think. Those really, like the realistic opportunities would be expanding Animal Kingdom and expanding Hollywood Studios. And the thing that I, you know, that is like somewhat concerning to me about these blue sky ideas that they have put out there is that they seem safe to me. They don't seem exciting. So like doing this like Equatorial America theme and already saying like, maybe we'll turn this into Indiana Jones or We'll bring in Kanto in. That is not, I feel like, I don't feel like that's what it's going to be because I just don't think that Disney would casually be dropping 
some ideas of like, oh, well, maybe we'll try this or maybe we'll try that. Because those are not things that are going to get people to kind of take their focus off of Epic Universe. That's all brand new. And it's people are excited about it. Are people going to be that excited about Indiana Jones at Animal Kingdom? Like, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think so either. I mean, I will say they've done a good job with uh, maybe consistently year after year opening a new ride and you see how excited people get just for a ride. But I think they need to do something a lot bigger, like Amy said, just to stay competitive right now with Epic Universe because I feel like it's going to be pretty popular for a while. It'll die down after a while, but in the meantime, people are still, like Amy said, Disney is just kind of blah right now to a lot of people they need to spruce it up a little bit and kind of make it exciting so assuming and it seems like we are all on team expansion versus fifth gate i am looking at let's just start here a map of animal kingdom what would you change in animal kingdom what would you add on and how would you accommodate more customers because today i know it's school vacation week here in the northeast the Lightning Lane line extended into Harambe and past the bathrooms by the drummers. That was the Lightning Lane line. How long of a wait was that? That What was that, an hour to an hour and a half in the Lightning Lane if you're back that far just to get on Kilimanjaro Safaris? So, I mean, that, you have a couple of lines like that. That's half a day right there. So what would you do in Animal Kingdom? I know I've been very vocal about what I would change and some things I would add, but what about you guys? Well, what you just said right there is that's just part of the problem. Like there's one or two rides at Animal Kingdom that really get people like that's the reason they want to go there. And it's not everybody I get that, but realistically speaking, people go there for Avatar and people go there for Everest. Everest. They need more. You got to have something there that's a little bit more exciting something, you know, I don't know, like another roller coaster, another ride like Avatar. I don't know specifically like a theme or anything. I don't have anything in mind, but you got to put four or five more rides there at least to make that a full day park. And I'm not talking, you know, another uh, Navi River journey. I'm talking about four or five rides are, that are going to consistently make people want to come back to the park, like a Guardians, like a Tron, like an Avatar, something like that. So I always, I, initially, I always wanted them to turn Dino Land into Australia because they have enough IP that is set in Australia and you've got the Finding Nemo show right there. So that could technically become part of Australia and then bring over the uh, Crush's Coaster. I think that's where at Tokyo Disney Sea, maybe uh, wherever that ride is, it, it exists overseas and and bring it. And then maybe like the rescuers down under at where Dinosaur is just to like carry through that theme. But I also, and I think I mentioned this also during that the wish list episode, is after having gone to Costa Rica, the whole ecotourism industry in Costa Rica is so amazing. I would love to see them do something. And it kind of fits into like what they're thinking theming wise. But I feel like this needs to be more than just what is, you know, bringing some rides into the footprint that currently exists for Dino Land. I feel like they need to be able to expand that out a little bit. And I think that they need to to build another resort that enters into the theme park. I think that that is, you know, right now, Beach Club is the closest that you get to kind of having a hotel that enters into a theme park. But it doesn't. You, you still have to go outside. But Grand California at Disneyland is so, people love that. People love being able to walk in and the way that they themed the Grand Californian and then having it, you know, you enter into the part of the park that's like the um, the national parks area where like the Grizzly River Run is. That's so awesome. Like that that continued theming from the hotel into the into the theme park is amazing. And also now they, they've just redone the Disneyland Hotel in Paris, which enters right into Disneyland. That looks spectacular. I mean, that is something that would really drive, like for me, that it makes me want to go seeing those pictures because I feel like you're getting this total immersive experience from the hotel into the park. 
And I feel like that's what Disney really needs to do. It can't just be about like throwing a couple of rides into the park. It needs to be transforming that area and bringing an experience that carries from, from the hotel into the park to generate some excitement also about that area of Disney World, where people always talk about it being kind of set far away. But if you kind of create just like, you know, we, we always talk about the Crescent Lake neighborhood and then you've got the Seven Seas Lagoon neighborhood. Let's create like an, a, you know, an Animal Kingdom neighborhood over there where you've got the Animal Kingdom Lodge and then you've got a hotel that's themed after Central America and create some sort of larger presence there that is not just the park, but also the hotel and the experience surrounding it. Because I think that that is something that would generate excitement for people. And it's definitely something that would get people into Animal Kingdom, where that might be a park that, you know, to your point, Phil, it's a half day, or it might be a park that people think that they don't have to do. If people, you know, aren't looking to spend as much money on going into the parks, I think Animal Kingdom is probably the first one that people eliminate because you definitely want to go to Magic Kingdom and most people definitely want to go to Epcot. And I think if you've got kids between Pixar, Toy Story Land and Galaxy's Edge, plus you've got Rock and Roller Coaster and Tower of Terror, like that's just a more appealing park, I think, for kids of all ages. So, you know, I think that Animal Kingdom, that whole area of the Walt Disney World Resort needs a little bit of you know, a little life breathed into it. So I think it needs to be more than just theming a, a land. I think it needs to be a full out, like we're adding this hotel, we're adding shopping, we're adding restaurants and create a more, a, just a larger presence of something there. There's a couple of good ideas there, but the only thing I would point out is if you open up another hotel, even if it's just five, 600 rooms, that's another five, 600 rooms worth of people that you're bringing into the park. And right now, the problem is you've got, whether it's overcrowding or understaffing, you've got too many people and the lines are too long. So you need to be careful introducing more hotel rooms and more people. Now, with that being said, I'm looking at a map in the entire area between Animal Kingdom and Pandora is open space with the exception of some staff parking and buildings to one side. There is a ton of area there to accommodate that either for expansion or for a hotel. You also mentioned, near and dear to my own heart, we've talked about it, looking at a map, Dino Land USA, if you include Finding Nemo the Musical, that area is roughly two and a half times the size of Pandora. That is a massive piece of real estate there. I don't think people realize how much is actually there in terms of scope and size. You have water that looks out towards the rest of the park. It is also backed by water, and it's completely wide open. Why they have not put just a complete copy of Tokyo Disney Sea there is beyond me. It would be revolutionary for that park. It would open up the park at night. It would draw people in. It would be stunningly beautiful. You could easily theme it to what Animal Kingdom already is. There's a lot of room there that could be used, but they need to use it effectively, not just transplanting Indiana Jones and throwing the latest IP and Encanto in there. I think, you know, when you look in at, at the drone show that they do at Disneyland Paris, that would be a great addition to that park at nighttime because I, I get that they can't be doing fireworks with all of the animals right there, but bringing a drone show would be, I mean, that show to me looks amazing. So I think between expanding it, bringing more people to that area, and then having nighttime offerings, it's really what, I mean, and, and that's really what that area of Disney World needs. It needs a reason for people to be there after 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. And speaking of unused areas, When's the last time? And again, I know it's beautiful up there. We've done it with the kids. You can go and draw, la, la, la. When's the last time anyone walked into Animal Kingdom and said, you know, I am just dying to go up to Rafiki's Planet Watch. Man, we haven't been there in a while, and it is so gosh darn exciting. Well, that's what I'm saying about Let's the rides. The like they need more rides. You need a reason to be there because Rafiki's isn't 
you know, you need something like a thrill ride. You need something that's going to keep people in the park for more than half a day. And they have the room there. like perfect. I went to Rafiki's Planet Watch last September. Uh, well, September, I think 2022. I mean, if there were 30 people over there, I'd be surprised. I mean, I, I, I did the drawing, you know, the animation class. And there were probably about 10 other people there with me. And then I walked over to the petting zoo and there might have been 10 people there. And then you had some people like milling about watching some demonstration. Wait. Okay. But it was empty. So, I mean, it, it is. I mean, and I get that that's like a it's part of part of like the mission of Animal Kingdom is this like conservation effort and bringing the education about conservation. But I think that they could also, you know, they could incorporate that in in my idea, especially if like they're theming it and, and kind of doing this like ecotourism type of knockoff experience. There's plenty of experience to be or opportunity to be educating people about conservation efforts through that type of addition to the park. Animal Kingdom Lodge is close enough too. I was thinking that you could do, I've always wanted like a, a tunnel or some kind of a, I think like they could do like a nature trail because they're so big on National Geographic. You could almost do like a safari ride or like, a, like I said, a nature trail where you could walk. So the lodge to the park is 1.3 miles. So you're looking at maybe a 20 minute walk, maybe a little bit more than a 20 minute walk, but that would be a cool way to connect Animal Kingdom Lodge right to the park with like a nature trail or some kind of a safari ride over to the park. I was just looking, actually, if you go from the corner of the building on the Arusha Savannah directly into the center of Pandora, it is not quite 3,000 feet. So as a direct line, it's actually closer to a half mile than it is a mile if you come from the corner of the lodge. And how cool would that be just to walk out of your, your hotel and just take a, a nature trail or something and just walk right into the park? Uh, Kathleen's got her finger up. She's saying, go ahead. Okay, so we, any other thoughts on Animal Kingdom? Because we could certainly move on and start picking on the other parks as well and what they're lacking. I mean, I'm just looking at, because I agree with you about Tokyo Disney Sea, and it just feels like it's crazy that that park, which seems to be like the most unique park that Disney has at this point, that it's not something that they have tried to replicate to some degree. Now, I, I do, I realize that there are, are rides there that exist in other parks, but I was just looking to see what is there that would be a good addition to Animal Kingdom Lodge. But I, I, I mean, I definitely, I mean, not, not the lodge, but the park. Just the aesthetics of it, just the views, just the theming alone would drag people in. Throw in one or two people eater dark rides and you would have a winner. You could easily do something between the lodge and the park. You could easily transform Dino Land USA into something completely solid. You could easily do something different with Rafiki's Planet Watch. And that park is surrounded by open space in at least two directions that I'm looking at. It's ripe for expansion before you go building on a whole other gate. Yeah, I would love to see Animal Kingdom Lodge connect to the park. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't mm -hmm. that be like the ultimate, like, because that's everybody's complaint about Animal Kingdom Lodge. You know, it's too far away. At least it would be directly connected right to. You know what they need, Scott? Not a Skyliner. Golf carts. Golf carts make anything better. I mean, I also like the idea of having another resort walk right into the park as well. I know it brings more people, but if you can do that and then add a couple more rides at Animal Kingdom, I mean, I think it would be perfect. I'm all for a resort. I was just pointing yeah. out that you don't necessarily solve the problem right. by adding more rooms without adding more accommodations inside the park right. for it. I think right. because of that, they would have to definitely add like a few more like pretty big attractions. Well, I think they would definitely need to expand Animal Kingdom and then definitely expand Hollywood Studios, which why don't we talk about Holly, Hollywood Studios next? Because I think that that's, to Scott's point before, back where they had the Star Cruiser, that whole area behind where, you know, like the New York Street was and where Mama Melrose is, there's a cast parking lot beyond that that 
if you continue on goes eventually you get to the galactic star cruiser you know these parking lots just they don't need to accommodate as many cars as they used to in the past they're half empty all the time i think that they could probably lose some of that parking and turn it into an expanded land that's over over there by where muppet vision 3d is because there's really nothing over there except for Pizza Rizzo, Mama Melrose, and Muppet Vision 3D. So the only downside to that is if you're expanding into the parking lot, you have to come out behind Star Tours and that direction because that's where the parking lot runs from. If you were to come out from Muppet Vision 3D, there is nowhere to go because you are bounded by World Drive and East Point of Vista up on that side. So you would have to come out of the other side behind Echo Lake into the parking lot. That's the one problem with Hollywood Studios is it is very much hemmed in by the existing roadways and parking lots. Of all the parks, it it probably is the one park that really lacks space for expansion. Everywhere else, you have a little bit of room in at least one direction. You really don't have that with Hollywood Studios. You would have to reroute everything to expand that park at all i know they need something there i I mean it's i think it's the most packed park we don't go there often and it's because it's so packed every time we go we could barely get on a ride like every time we go we would have to buy genie plus just a ride of all the parks i will at least give it a little bit of a pass because it was the one park that was designed specifically to be a half day park Eisner's biggest concern was that they were losing customers and they needed a reason to keep them, but they knew from the outset that that wasn't supposed to be a park where you would spend a whole day there. It was designed to be as small as it is, and now they need the extra space and they need the extra capacity, and they just don't have a lot of places for it there. And it didn't really even have rides when it opened. I mean, it was a very much like an experience, like you did things. You know, the first time I went, it was in 1991. So it was two years, a year and a half after it opened. And I recorded a music video of me singing Vogue. I recorded an audio. I got a cassette of me singing Groovy Kind of Love by Phil Collins. They where um, the trolley car cafe is right now, the Starbucks. That was a, a sound stage that you could go on and and film a scene from a you know, and participated in a, in a scene of a movie. They did have the Backlot Studio Tour. But I feel like other than that, you know, and, and and they had the Indiana Jones show and I guess Star Tours. That was like the one ride that they had there was Star Tours. Well, remember how this park came about as well. So there was some conversation between Michael Eisner and some other unnamed companies, we'll call it. It's in the public domain. But they knew Universal Orlando was coming, and they scrambled to open a park before Universal Orlando. So Hollywood Studios opened in May of 1989, and Universal opened in June of 1990. So it really was a rush job to try and preempt Universal before they had the opportunity to build their own working park right up the road. And didn't they just buy the right to use the name MGM? They didn't really even own any MGM properties, so it was just the name, and it didn't have anything else to do with anything else that was in the park. Correct. I believe that was the case, and that was what led up to, that's why when you lost the great movie ride and all the intellectual properties were there, the names had to change, and they had to start injecting IP into that park because that agreement fell apart. And, you know, so that park right now, it's kind of like a mishmash of things. because It's exactly the word that was just running through my head, spot on. Two lands themed after IP, and then areas that are just themed after what, like, the original concept was, which was kind of like a throwback to the heyday of Hollywood. So it's kind of like having a little bit of an identity crisis because they really have changed the what that park really was at its core, which was supposed to be this, like, throwback 1920s kind of... oh you know, the great movie ride was, was also there. So I guess, you know, there were a couple of rides, but it was, it was really just what it is now. 
I mean, therefore, like, I feel like if they were to expand and, and add a land, it has to be another, a, a different IP. Because it's the only thing that makes sense is to just, like, make it, like, these kind of little different pockets of Disney universes within Disney that exist. So you've got Star Wars, and then you have Toy Story. And I really thought that they were hinting at Muppets. I thought that they were going to do a big, like, Muppets thing. That turned out to be a big nothing. Just heartbreaking. I sat through that whole D23 presentation and just the whole time got to have the Muppets there's going to be a big performance by Miss Piggy at the end and they, they just left the stage it was just like three guys walking around you could see them controlling the Muppets and then it was over it was the most awkward thing ever which I still maintain I think there was something else in that presentation that they pulled out at the last minute because it was so incongruent that there had to be something else there that they decided not to talk about I agree. I mean, I I was waiting for the announcement, too. I was positive that they were announcing that they were bringing like a Muppets land to Hollywood Studios. And, you know, the, the thing about Hollywood Studios is over to the side of the park where you've got Indiana Jones and then you have Star Tours. I mean, that's also like a very random mishmash of things happening over there, too, that have nothing to do with anything. I mean, I know people like Star Tours. I personally hate it it makes me it's like the ride that makes me feel like the most nauseous in all of disney world so i will i refuse to ride it and it's cool but it's just kind that's of like exactly weird. what a rebel spy would say to throw off suspicion i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> you got me but it's just so randomly situated outside of galaxy's edge you know what i mean it's just i wish that there was a way that they could like move it so that it like put that where where uh the galactic star cruiser is add add star wars back star tours back there and then take that whole side of the park where you've got indiana jones and and up to where muppet vision 3d is and create a cohesive land over there i'm dying because we're answering our own question i really think if there was a fifth gate it should have been star wars i think it should have just been all star wars just because i think they have a big enough following that you could have had You've got the nostalgia there with people that watched it back in the 70s, and you've got enough. I mean, it's current now, too, but you have the Galactic Star Cruiser already. You have rides that are in the park that don't even belong there. Star Tours is completely outside of the rest of it. You could have taken all of that and just made your own park with it. I think that that, that is belied by the fact that you can now walk through most of galaxy's edge without encountering huge crowds the star wars hotel failed i think that for those that are huge fans it's a very popular genre it's a very popular ip but i would venture to guess that 80 percent of disney fans really don't care about star wars we could go in or not go in and i liked it as a kid i enjoyed it watching the original trilogy growing up but i'm not going out of my way to go into a star wars land i think there's a very small subset of the population that you mentioned that and they just got very excited and looked in their closet for all of their cosplaying gear other than that crew i don't think it's going to draw enough people i think it needs to be wider than that i think yeah i think it's too risky done with it. i mean yeah i know what you mean but i think there's just so much they haven't done with that movie. I don't think that you can theme an entire park after one IP. I think that's way too risky. I don't know. I think it's big enough that you actually could. I mean, there's there's restaurants that you could do after it. There's a ton of rides that you could do after it. And, you know, they already tried the hotel. That would be a cool thing to just connect right to the park. I think it would be probably their best shot if they could do it with just one thing. That would be their best shot. I mean, I don't know what else it would be. Yeah, I don't have a better suggestion, so I can't step on it too hard because, you know, everything I've heard of Villains Park, a Princess Park, I don't think those draw the crowds either. I think those are better incorporated elsewhere. I think it's the one single IP they have that they could expand upon widely enough to create a whole new park. I just don't know that it draws the masses like the rest do. Yeah, I don't know. But back to what Amy was saying, if you look at the park, I think mishmash is the right word. This park is a perfect example of what happens when you don't have a long-term plan. You don't have a cohesive plan to follow for how you want to theme something. 
this park, I think, is very illustrative of where Disney lost their sight of theming, of cohesive theming from beginning to end, front to back. You walk in the front gate and to your left, you've got Echo Lake and Star Tours. Then you go through Galaxy's Edge, which is separated from Star Tours. And then you walk out the backside of Galaxy's Edge and you're in Andy's backyard. And then you leave Andy's backyard and you either go by Minnie and Mickey's Runaway Runaway Railway or up into old school Hollywood. There is no cohesive theme anywhere in that park. And I think that's what it suffers from. And that's why I I feel like they just need to take another IP and plop it over there so that the whole gist of the park is different, you know, different. And and you can still call it Hollywood Studios because they're all based around movies, but it's basically become like a movie franchise park. Like what are like the popular movie franchises? Well, we don't have any more popular movie franchises. We just have sequels and live action remakes of things that were hits 20 years ago. Well, it would, I mean, to say that Indiana Jones is still a successful franchise, I mean, it is. They just made a fifth movie, but I love Indiana Jones. And how did that movie do in the theater? What'd you say? And how did that movie do in the theater? I'm assuming not well. (laughs) Very underwhelming, yeah. But I love Indiana Jones, so, I mean, and they do have precedent to bring a Disney, you know, an Indiana Jones-themed ride because of Disneyland having one. So, I mean, that could be fun. That could be a fun, a fun land to add that would have, you know, more that where you could add thrill rides where, you know, a thrill ride would make sense because I don't like with Muppets land. I just don't know what they would put there. That would be all that thrilling. It's, it's to me, that's like, that's not adding the thrills. That's just adding laughs and, and cutesiness and stuff for kids. But if we're looking for an answer to and also to kind of like the the thing that's what has happened with Hollywood Studios now is that when you design a theme park, you know, they're very intentional about having these thrill rides in different parts of, of the park so that you have people, different areas of the park that people are being drawn to. Hollywood Studios, you've got basically the entire right side of the park is where everyone wants to be. And the left side of the park is for like dining. And if you want to see the Indiana Jones stunt show. Yeah. And there's no easy way to get from A to B. Yeah. So I I don't know. I'm not sure what the answer is to what land to bring over there. But I think it needs to be something that would give opportunity for thrill rides. And I think. I think that Indiana Jones makes way more sense than the Avatar franchise. And look at how much people love Flight Flight of Passage. So, I mean, I think that they could do something with Indiana Jones and make it more, especially because that stunt show is already there. You lose the stunt show, but you bring back something that's even more exciting. Well, that's true. If you lose the stunt show and you lose Star Tours because you already have Galaxy's Edge, that does open up a whole section over there, especially if you go back to the cast services building and the cast lot. I think, unfortunately, with Indiana Jones, the next movie is going to be Indiana Jones and the Mystery of Metamucil because he was looking pretty rough in this last one, and I think that's what hurt it. Everyone liked the idea of Indiana Jones, and here he comes crawling across the screen in his walker with his fix dent Listen, he'll always be a hero in my eyes. Yeah, back in 1986, maybe. Okay, should we move on to Magic Kingdom and how we tear that park apart and put it back together? Because unfortunately, I think the only answer for Hollywood Studios is just to knock it all to the ground and start over. (laughs) Burn it to the ground. Yeah, I mean, Magic Kingdom, I, I feel like the opportunity really lies in Tomorrowland. And they could redo all of Tomorrowland for, you know, I mean, keep Tron, keep Space Mountain. But I mean, I think you could all, you could lose Buzz Lightyear, Space Ranger Spin, honestly. You've got Toy Story Mania and the other park. So lose Buzz Ear, lose the Monsters, Inc., Laugh Floor. You lose the building that you've got the Merchant of Venus and the un, unoccupied space now where... Stitch's Great Escape was, 
and that silly stage between Buzz Lightyear and Space Mountain because it's just a dead area of the park over there over by Carousel of Progress. Yeah, and then the Tomorrowland Noodle Terrace or whatever. I mean, now they just do the dessert parties there, but you can, do, you can find someplace else to do a dessert party and just you've got a whole canvas over there. Redo Tomorrowland and make it make it really awesome. So what do you do with Tomorrowland? I think you bump up against the problem that Tomorrowland started having 10 years after Disneyland's Tomorrowland opened and why they have such a difficult time with Tomorrowland's now. Life is moving so fast. Technology is moving so fast that how do you keep up with something that's tomorrow? Because tomorrow is literally tomorrow. That's how quickly it's moving. Well, I think that they kind of approached that with Epcot. And, you know, a lot of people were unhappy with, you know, adding Moana and feeling like it, that Epcot is not the place where that belongs. And you could argue that point in, in either direction. But I do think that what Disney is trying to kind of do is realize that when the parks were being built, tomorrow was about technology. I think now we live in a time where tomorrow is about like sustainability and what are we doing to take care of the planet and make sure that we have a place to live? Because what are we going to do if we if we burn the whole thing to the ground? Well, they covered that with all the new cardboard straws. It's OK, people don't worry about it. We have cardboard straws now. <laughs> exactly. So I do think that there is like a kind of a shift in philosophy about what tomorrow actually means. I don't know that we're so like, I mean, clearly we're, we're a society that is obsessed with technology. We use, we have technology attached to our hands at all times, which is not what the case was when these parks were conceived. So I think that the idea of tomorrow is something that has changed vastly. Like we we no longer sit here and think about, oh, we're going to, when we go and we live on the moon, like, I don't think people are thinking that way anymore. You know, like that's not, that's not the way that the human imagination is working the way that it, you know, the way that it did back in like the 1940s and 50s. So, I, I mean, I think the definition of tomorrow changes and then Disney will, that is something that they can reckon with in in bringing that to the park or just really, really play on this nostalgic, like this nostalgic view of what tomorrow meant. It's like very retro. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't know that I'm fully on board with the theming of that, though I do appreciate what you're saying. But what I do 1000% agree with is Magic Kingdom is arguably the most crowded park on a daily basis. It certainly takes one of the highest numbers of people. It doesn't hold as many as Epcot, but it always feels far more packed inside of Magic Kingdom. So their problem there is not expanding Magic Kingdom. Beyond Big Thunder is just silly. I'm looking at the space they've got available, and it's roughly the same amount of space that they've got in Tomorrowland. Think about walking into Tomorrowland. You've got Cosmic Rays on one side. You've got Muppet Vision 3D, which is a huge people eater, but nobody wants to go in there. When's the last time you saw Muppet Vision 3D actually crowded? You go past there, you've got Buzz Lightyear. Way outdated, a lot of fun. But... Wait, M do you mean Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor? Oh, that's it. It's Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. I'm sorry, not Muppet Vision 3D. I'm still stuck in Hollywood Studios. Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. Nobody goes in there. I mean, it always shows a 20-minute wait because that's the wait for the next show. Yes, Scott, Yeah, you're, you're that guy. We Come on now. I'm always that. I never have been that guy, but I want to be that but guy. It doesn't eat people like it's supposed to. There are not crowds sitting outside that building waiting to go in, and that was specifically designed as a people eater. On the left, you've got what used to be Alien Encounter turned into Stitch's Great Escape, another ride that went down for refurbishment that never opened back up. That walkway is crowded. All it is now is stroller parking. That, that's all that entire strip is, is stroller parking left and right. You've got Astro Orbiter, which is a great ride, but it can take like seven people per hour by the time you funnel through the elevators. You've got Carousel of Progress. 
I'll chain myself to the front of it before I let him destroy it, but it's not always crowded. You've got that stage that they only use during late night dance parties and Christmas parties and Halloween parties. Other than that, you occasionally see Buzz Lightyear up there and you see Stitch doing a meet and greet. There's a ton of space there that could eat a lot of people that's completely unused. It's just dead space. And they're talking about expanding beyond Big Thunder instead of filling in the buildings they already have there in what is probably the most crowded spot in Magic Kingdom on a regular basis. Oh, and while you're at it, can we please, for the love of God, turn the Speedway into electric cars? Just make up with with I Musk would... and put some electric cars there, please. I get more excitement from the golf carts. <laughs> I mean, they'd be better off just, just to add like a simulator, like a a driving simulator for kids. <laughs> Both of my children just died a little inside when you said that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that. And I could see people getting excited about a Tomorrowland makeover. Yeah. I could see that, too. Yeah. Most definitely. Oh, Scott. <laughs> Scott, Kathleen, you've been mostly quiet with the exception of being upset you're not that guy. What have you got? Go ahead. I don't. I don't. Well, I just said earlier about Stitch. I think most of Tomorrowland can go. I really. <laughs> people are gonna hate me, but the Carousel of Progress, I really could care less about. Buzz Lightyear is in the wrong park. The Tomorrowland Speedway needs to be completely removed from there. I mean, what I think the people mover. I think I just. I like the people mover. You can keep that there, but I think I just. And like Phil said, the stage that's back there, I mean, that's what, over 50% of Tomorrowland I just said I could get rid of? Maybe more. Yeah, I mean, it's boring. It's outdated, and it needs a little revamp. What if a... I had to redo any part of Magic Kingdom, it would be Tomorrowland. Well, I also said, too, about Tom Sawyer Island and that whole area over there, I would probably want to do something different with that, too. How many people actually jump on the boat and go over there? I mean, come on. The only problem with that is, is it's a remarkably small piece of land and the bottleneck to get people back and forth would make it almost impossible to fill it with people and keep them coming and going. Build a bridge. <laughs> Something. I'd like them to, to see them at a restaurant over there. That way you don't, you know, you take a ferry over there to go to the restaurant or small boat. and. Scott about Tiana over there. Remember you mentioned something about Tiana's place or something like that? Oh, I didn't know why they didn't put Tiana's over there instead of actually retheming Splash Mountain in the because they have the um what's the boat that's already over there, like the river boat? Uh, Liberty Bell. Liberty Bell, yeah. I thought that would have been a better place to put like a whole area just dedicated to Tiana rather than maybe retheming a classic ride. I 1000% agree. Can you imagine what the visuals would be like? I think the only problem you might have is the visuals coming across from Haunted Mansion in that side because it's not thematically appropriate, but they managed to do it pretty well in Disneyland. But neon lights, a paddle wheeler going by down the river, you would be able to thematically make it work across the river. That would be your jump from one era to the next, from Frontierland over to Tiana's Island. You could have that big, beautiful lit sign. I think access is your only problem. But I said from the beginning, I have no problem with Tiana getting her due. I just don't think that it fits where they put it. I think it was shoehorning it into a place that it didn't really belong thematically. But if they wanted to turn that entire island into a whole Tiana themed restaurant and maybe a meet and greet, I don't know if they've got really room for a dark ride. But that, along with the paddle wheeler, it's a no brainer. Yeah, definitely. Bring back yeah. my splash mount. Yeah. I mean, as I mean, far I, as Epcot, I'm sorry, go ahead, Amy. I was just going to say, like, to wrap it up on Magic Kingdom, I mean, for me, it's redoing Tomorrowland and there's really not enough space anywhere else within the park to do anything that's all that exciting. Yes, I, I I have ideas of things that they could do here and there, but in terms of doing something that's big and exciting, I think a you know a Tomorrowland redo is something that people could get excited about. So moving over to Epcot, I just want to state to go back to what Amy said right off the bat, I am one of the world's biggest Epcot purists. I was explaining it to my son today. We had the Epcot loop 
playing in the background in the car as we were driving around today and he couldn't understand i guess he could not that he couldn't understand he asked why it was such a big deal for me to always have that music on and i was explaining to him what epcot was when i was little you want to talk about tomorrow i explained about the video conferencing to make your dinner reservations you can pull your phone out right now as an 11 year old and facetime anybody in the world you went to Epcot, you could video conference somebody to make a dinner reservation. That was mind blowing. Touch screens were mind blowing. The fact that you could make a long distance call anywhere in the country was mind blowing. With that said, I know everyone's complaining about Moana. I think that Moana walkthrough is the closest they have come to original Epcot with anything they have done in the last 30 years. I think it's absolutely perfect. I completely agree with you. Completely. I mean, funnily enough, <laughs> one of funnily my enough. one of my favorite memories of my first time going to Epcot was going to the um, the Living Seas Pavilion, and was before it, they turned it into the Hydrolator. Yes, the Hydrolator, and then that the movie that they showed you about the forming deluge. the oceans, or you know, it was like I remember watching like I was captivated by everything that was happening and there was nothing fancy about it i mean there was nothing it was simple and it was educational but it was well done and it captured my attention and i remember it to this day and when i walked through journey of water i felt like the same that same thing like this makes me feel like this was what the intention was of of Epcot to bring to bring education to life in a you know fun interactive edutainment simple, yes yes so I loved that so I'd love to see more of that sprinkled throughout Epcot I know that people don't find exciting and they make fun of it mostly because it took so darn long to be done but you say that as if it's done. Let's just well, point out that it's still I meant is journey, not. I meant journey of water. I didn't journey mean the of whole water. Okay. front of the park. I'm talking about that one corner of future world. Or we finally got the spine back open. I saw today that, or was it yesterday, that Figment is now there. So it turns out, in fact, I did find the Figment of somebody's imagination at the top of the pedals. So it does exist, ladies and gentlemen. Amy is losing it. Uh... Okay, so let's address the elephant in the room that's not me. What goes? Because we all know what the popular choice is for what has to go in Epcot, right? Like Frozen? What? What? <laughs> what? Like what area in Epcot? If you have to take something out of Epcot, what's leaving? And it breaks my heart to say this, but you know what? I'm okay with it because it's not the original and it can just burn to the ground. Um, it's taking you guys this long? Well, for me, I think it's... If I had to pick something to go, it would be that section between China and Germany. It's like that. Like, I always feel like I'm in Animal Kingdom when I'm there. Equatorial Africa. Yeah, I think that's my least favorite. The African outpost. Is that what they call it? The outpost. Oh, I mean, I'm sure that I'll, I'm going to get hate mail for this, but I, I need Test Track to be gone. Can we mute her now? Well, I mean, it's not like it runs on a regular basis anyway. It's not a big loss. Things down 60% of every day. I gave you guys all this time, and you're keeping Journey into Imagination with Figment. Really? Right. I thought I knew you. Well, listen, I, I, honestly, if, I I'm forgot being, it was if, if I'm being real here, I, I feel like they could get rid of Test Track or at least, like, update it. I, I don't know. Like, it just, for me, it's lost its appeal. It's, it's not that exciting anymore. Well, if rumors are true, Test Track is due for a rebuild with sponsorship. So I believe that has been mentioned in the news. Okay. Who's sponsoring it? I'm assuming not Chevrolet anymore. Is OnStar even a thing anymore? I just They still make it standard in your cars. So I went to renew my OnStar the other day. I log into my OnStar account, and I can't do that. I have to actually call them from the rearview mirror to renew my OnStar. So guess who isn't renewing his OnStar because that's stupid. <laughs> yeah i didn't even know they still did that i also think that mission space is i mean i know that they just opened the restaurant over there and it's kind of like fitting into the theming but i feel like that's a ride that is a skip for a lot of people 
And yeah, I think Journey into Imagination is, look, I think that they could do something really cool with the concept Journey into Imagination, but this this ride and our, you know, our attachment to Figment, we can do better than than what is there. And that's big. That's There's a lot of space there. And then whatever they're going to do with the Finding Nemo building, like, aren't they losing that too? You know something I don't? I thought that they announced, and maybe they are, they're not doing this, but I thought that when they announced, like, initially all of the, the big plans for Epcot that the Finding Nemo ride was going, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm mistaken. But I do think that all of those rides need an update or to be reimagined in some way, because there's really nothing all that thrilling at Epcot other Turtle than talk. now, cool. uh, other now than, uh, uh, you know, Cosmic Rewind, but everything else is just kind of, eh. Well, and there's a lot of space still that's unused. I think the beauty of Epcot is that it is massive. That park will eat people like no other if properly run. You know, we're talking 100,000 people a day to cap out Epcot. But you look at what's unused. So Journey into Imagination with Figment is grossly underutilized. You still have the Wonders of Life Pavilion that's stashed back there that is completely unused just needs to be redone now there's been some talk about maybe there being a sinkhole back there that nobody's ever confirmed but you've got things on either side of it you've still got the world showplace pavilion that just hides in the back there that's a monster piece of real estate that's completely unused i mean the world showplace pavilion alone would encompass all of the uk pavilion it's that big hiding around the back side there's a lot of room still to be used at epcot there I think, unfortunately, now that it's just entering the final steps of its transformation, you won't see Epcot touched again for probably another 10 plus years. And that's kind of sad because there's a lot of underutilized space there that I think could really be plussed up, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it would be cool if that world, at the, if they added a ride in Canada where the World Showplace Pavilion is. That, that's what you're talking about, right? That area right next to, like, in between Canada and UK? Yeah. yeah, more or less. You can access it basically from the very top side of Canada where the Joffrey's card is. But yeah. if you look at it on a map, it actually extends in behind the UK pavilion. It right. makes a big curving L. I will say, as a second-generation American with half of my family still north of the border, that if you're going to do a ride in Epcot, I want to ride a moose. Just saying, throwing it out there in case anyone's listening in Imagineering. Let me ride a moose. What would you call the ride? <laughs> ride a moose in Canada. Do, do you need to call it anything other than come ride a moose? People will be lining up. It doesn't need a crazy name. I'm already buying a lightning lane for that. But you know that, um, you know, the hotel that is, I, I, what is, what is the name of the hotel that they've replicated in? I can't think of the, the actual name of it. It's the one that's like replicated in the Canada Pavilion. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I believe that's in Toronto and we don't talk about Toronto. I'm French Canadian. Was it in Toronto? I didn't think it was. Well, I don't know. I'm making this stuff up as I go along. Well, anyway, during the winter, they had don't they have like a kind of like a bobsledish type ride that that goes past like that you can ride from that hotel. I think that that would be really cool if they added a ride like that. And, you know, kind of like expanded that to become like a larger Canada pavilion. Isn't there a Disney movie after a bobsled team? What was the name of that movie? Cool Runnings. Thank you. There you go. Well, hey, Sanka, you dead man. <laughs> I have I have <laughs> rode a ride before that was a bobsled at an amusement park. I mean, they could do something like that. Where was this? That was at King's Dominion in Virginia. It was called the Avalanche. Well, I'm sorry, go. we're talking about nobody's ever ridden a Disney ride that talks about riding a bobsled. Or, do I know you people? Matterhorn. <laughs> Matterhorn. Thank you, Amy. Someone's paying attention here. By I the way, it is the, the <laughs> Chateau Laurier in Ottawa. That's what I was going to say. It was right on the tip of Scott's tongue. It was either that or the Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So like, it's if you look at that that hotel during the winter, they have like some sort of ride there. So, I mean, I think that that could be 
if they themed a ride around that, that could be a, make it a thrill ride. That would be another place in World Showcase that could absorb some people. Let's make it happen, people. Not just a thrill ride. It's a fill ride. I'm going to go completely esoteric. They could, does anyone, do, do you guys ever go and watch the bands during Festival of the Arts? Sometimes, Sometimes, yeah. So one of my favorite bands in the entire world is a band called Rafi out of Canada that is there for every Festival of the Arts. And I've sat down and spoken to them many times because every time I hear them speak, they are truly French-Canadian. It brings me directly back to my childhood where everybody had that accent in my family. So if they just did a Rafi meet and greet, you could just lightning lane me the, every time. <laughs> they're great. I, I like Rafi. Yeah, they're super nice, too. I've spoken to like them a bunch of times. female lead singer, right? Yeah, she yeah. is. Yeah, she's great. So yeah, so I mean, I I think that you're right that there's opportunity, there's space right there, and I think they could build a thrill ride right there that would fit in with the theming of of Canada. I mean, they were supposed to bring in Mary Poppins right back in that area, and unfortunately, that died when half of Epcot Tomorrow died. That feels less exciting to me. Let's let's throw a, a thrill ride back there because. The rides in World Showcase are all, like, pretty mild. Well, what were we supposed to have? I mean, over the years, just in World Showcase alone, we were supposed to have Russia. We were supposed to have Israel. We were supposed to have Brazil. In Germany, we were supposed to get the Rhine River ride. In the UK, recently, we were supposed to get Mary Poppins theming. It's not like they haven't had ideas. They've just never followed through with any of them. Spain, we were supposed to get Spain as well. Yeah, well, if you ever watched that video of what Epcot, you know, like the Disney promotional video about what Epcot was going to be. It's wild. All right. So have we wrapped it all up? Yeah. So, I mean, let's just say we, we, we don't really have any time left, but. We ran out of time 20 minutes ago. Let's say they are going to do a, a fifth park. Do you guys have any idea of like what you would want it to be? I know, Phil, you feel strongly about it not being a villains park. I would argue against any fifth gate. I would argue vehemently against any fifth gate. I know that you say they need something to gather attention. They need a big wow moment. And I don't disagree with that. I just think a fifth gate from a long-term standpoint is the worst thing they could do right now. I have, I have no thoughts on it. I, I really don't. I can't think of what I would want as a fifth gate. I, if you're asking me, the only thing that I would really like is an adult only theme park. From Disney. <laughs> Redo of Pleasure Island. Something like that. I mean, yeah. You, I mean, it's got to be over 21 to get in, and they're open from 5 p.m. until 5 a.m. A fifth gate named Kungaloosh. Yes. Oh, my gosh. An Adventurers Club themed theme park. Let's go. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're talking to the guy who on his backpack he carries every day has a Society of Explorers and Adventurers pin. The wall of my office has an SCA plaque up on it. I could get down with that. That yeah. I could make a whole new episode on backstories of the Society of Explorers and Adventurers, all the characters, all their rides. Well, I mean, they've already got it in Mystic Manor, right? So so what, what I was going to say, and I, I didn't, I stupidly did not bring it connected to the to the SEA, but I was thinking about the the Disney treasure and how the entire theme of that ship is like this adventure theme. And I was thinking that would be a really fun type of theme park where we're like really diving into just kind of exploration. And, and that's where I was thinking like initially to an Indiana Jones type ride would fit, but that's kind of where I feel like and maybe people would feel like that's too similar to Animal Kingdom, but and maybe it's too like I, I don't know, but I, I I feel like that is because then you, like you're bringing in some of like the the mythology of Disney and of like of some of you know the rides that already ex exist, and I mean, and then you could put then you can put the Adventurers Club in there. I'm going to propose a whole new episode, and that's what it needs to be: Fifth Gate on Society of Explorers and Adventurers for those that are listening that don't understand the backstory of SEA, well, the, the dozens of backstories of SEA, almost every facet of Disney parks somewhere has a backstory that ties back to the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. 
from Indiana Jones to Jungle Cruise to Paradise Island to Hidden Gems all through Disney Springs, resorts, there's an SEA tie-in everywhere. And I just went from completely anti-Fifth Gate to everyone seeing me here bouncing up and down in my chair. I am a huge SEA fan. Yes, Phil, we can see Phil and his entire face lit up at that idea. Well done. All right, well, we solved, we solved, we solved it. Disney, call me up. I will help you build this fifth gate. We will tie it in everywhere worldwide. We'll turn it into a, a worldwide Disney scavenger hunt for SEA. It goes to Mystic Manor. It goes to Tokyo Disney Sea. It goes back to Florida. It goes to California. It is already everywhere. We can do this. What is the central icon of this park? Or should we let, let, let's wait. We'll, we'll save that. We'll save that. Oh, you have sparked my research brain. It's over. I know what you're doing for the rest of your kids vacation from school. Oh, my inner geek has just gone nuts. All right. Well, why don't we, this is, this is officially the longest episode we've ever done. So we should probably wrap it up. Oh, just wait till the Society of Explorers and Adventures. It's going to be like a five part series. I can see Kathleen's very excited about this. She's just disgusted with me right now. She's like, oh, I had God. to elbow her twice to wake up. <laughs> now you know how I felt when Amy was talking about her day around Crescent Lake. Looking at the water. I'll be at the pool if you need me. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, this was a long journey. We thank you for tagging along with us if, in fact, you did make it this far, and we wouldn't blame you if you didn't. But if you're listening, you can run over to Apple Podcasts, give us a like, five-star review, some positive commentary so we can outdo the podcasts that made the top 100 that haven't recorded in the last decade. <laughs> <laughs> and also, don't forget to follow us on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. Join us over on Facebook to join in on our shenanigans over there. And until next time, we'll DVC you real soon. Bye. Bye, guys. See you guys. And so our journey comes to an end. Oh no, please, can't we go back to page one and do it all over again? We started this thing together, and that's how we're finishing. Because that, my friends, is where the magic lives. Happily ever!